right. The, the pass mark uh, from uh, our resource persons this morning will give you the direction of our discussion this morning as we will break it down. Uh, Mr. Chidi, you're giving state government, oh, sorry, uh, federal government, you're giving federal government 55%. In what area? It's not a pass mark for a student as far as I am concerned. It is not a pass mark. Of course. So, what? how do you think they can get as much as 95% uh, as we, we there are so many things that have been set up concerning uh, the tackling of this pandemic in Nigeria we have the presidential task force on COVID-19 set up by President Muhammad Buhari that give an update a daily briefing on the pandemic in the country and also uh, isolation centers across the federation the testing centers so what did you see and how did you come about that particular 55 percent well, um, uh, 55 percent because uh, like i said it's not yet to hulu you don't just go home and say we have 100 percent and you relax and that's the end of it um in the case of i uh, of uh, testing uh, centers i think we need to and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the nation now okay i think we need to actually expand what you have now uh, you can uh, the, the number of uh, tests we carry out in a day in the country is not yet uh, what it should be uh, i think if 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 uh, if the testing centers are a little bit enlarged You'll be able to capture a lot of people inside the uh, inside the uh, uh, inside the uh, 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 your your capturing machine, and uh, you'll be able to know who you tested and who you're not going to who you've not tested. I take a, an example from uh, New York City. Uh, w when the pandemic got so bad, and uh, it was like in U.S. the whole of U.S. Uh, New York City, New York was was where it was uh, highest, and the governor said, "Look, the issue is not that uh, we have it highest here." The issue is that we have the testing kits. It's almost everywhere. So, so as far as testing is concerned, you're not happy with the way testing that, that, has been I'm, done that, in that, the country. That, that, as it stands now, Nigeria has tested uh, 30,657 persons yes. since the beginning of this pandemic yeah. in this country. How many, how many months ago? And um, uh, uh, Honorable Godwin Adindu did mention that it's a new virus that oh, we've yes. not come across before of course of course across the globe it's not it's not it's so not particular what, with what we'll be asking is it the fault of the federal government that uh, these testing centers are just coming up well um even though even though the pandemic is just new okay i'm sure as a government they have the intelligence unit also they knew when it was coming and uh, um, uh, as a government you should have been prepared you should have been you should be ready to, to make sure at least you'll be able to test the citizens that is the number one way of finding out who is having this uh, 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 virus or who is not having the virus. And if you're not able to capture all of them almost at the same time or within a considerable uh, uh, time or period, the spread will be there. Uh, that, 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 that's my take on that. Interesting. Honorable Adindu did oh. rated uh, the federal government 60%, just 5% uh, 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 higher than uh, Mr. Chidi's uh, assessment of the federal government's handling of COVID-19. But 30,000 657 number of tests conducted so far in this country is that a pass mark compared to over 200 million that's the estimated population of the country yeah we might not really give the pass mark uh, if if you look at it from a, a mathematical calculation okay but we're looking at the reality of the Nigerian population the, the geometric spread the dispersion of people and all that and uh, the fact that we are dealing with an emergency and we need to catch up with everybody at the same time. We need to uh, have, have data from Medugri, we need to have data from Lagos, we need to have data from Portacot, we need to have data from all over the, the, the country at the same time. And I'm saying that we were not prepared, we are not ready. We have never experienced this before. Okay, so, fine. so when you see the response rate of the federal mm -hmm. government, if you see the response rate, if you see the way the federal government quickly established the, the, the task force, and the, and the work of the NCDC and, and the, and the uh, continuous okay. exercise. Uh, you, you believe that the response rate, the response rate now is, is okay as it stands now? I believe that it is okay given the challenges of our, of, of our, of our country. We, we, have, given the spread. We, we have just 30,000, over 30,000 uh, yeah, uh, tests still, conducted the testing, in the country. The testing is still ongoing. It does not stop. It is still uh, ongoing. And they, they are, uh, right now they have moved from, from uh, uh, specific testing to community testing. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and all the states have keyed in into what the federal government is doing. So I, I'm sure that in the next few weeks, we're going to get good results. And if you also look at the, 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 the rating of our death cases, mm -hmm. you see that it has not really uh, uh, escalated. 
as, as, as one would have expected in a country of over 200 million people. Interesting. Do you, do you understand? Uh, so, so, okay. so when you look at the, our population, look at the, the, the rate of testing, look at the rate of cases and later and the rate of death. You see that there has been a real commendable conscious effort by the federal government. Uh, is it, is it the yeah. testing? Is it the testing uh, that they're doing that has brought down the number of deaths? The, the testing and the and the and the activities of the healthcare workers, everything is put, put together, has helped to bring it down. Uh, there, uh, if uh, if those things were not in place, of course. Our, our, our death case would have, would have skyrocketed. We are not having high rate of death cases right now because of all these quick measures that are put together and, and the level of campaign and consciousness that has been aroused within the uh, policy. Okay, uh, we will take a look at some of the precautionary measures uh, being put in place by the federal government to cut all the spread of this virus. I think we should begin with the, the lockdown. We started with the lockdown. The federal government uh, lockdown of uh, Lagos, Ogun, and the FCT. Later, it was uh, streamlined to Kano and a curfew uh, uh, across the federation from 8 p.m. down to 6 a.m. And uh, we we have, as it stands now, we have uh, the interstate movement. There is a ban on interstate movement, but it seems it has not been effective. And one will be asking: Does it mean that the federal government is not capable of ensuring? A total lockdown of those uh, interstate borders. Well, 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 well. Uh, yes, you talk about the federal government, and uh, I'm sure the presidency is not going to be everywhere. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, there is an executive he, order. He's the grand commander. Uh, in yes, of, of course, forces. of course. And uh, like I said, he cannot enforce anything from Abuja all alone, single-handedly. That is why the state governors are there, and that's why the local government, the council chairman, are there. Also. Whose fault now? Well, we if, have this movement. If it's uh, interstate, it has borders. to do with the states. When you talk about international boundaries, okay, let's talk about the federal government and hold them responsible. But when you talk about the interstates, they, that, this is where the local government and the, the, the third tier and second tier comes in. That's where they have to play a role. You know, it's unfortunate uh, uh, at the beginning of the lockdown, somebody was traveling between uh, um, Bayasa and Aba, and that person had to go all through to Delta State, Anambra State, Imo State, then back to other states. You understand and that what i'm trying to say that what i'm trying to say that it's not about how many hours it took that person to travel but incidentally at the end of the day that person made that interstate movement up to Aba from bielsa and that is to say even as i speak to you now people are still coming from abuja and lagos and don't ask me how they get in here it has to do with the interstate what are they doing at the boundaries at the, uh, the state boundaries who are there what are they really doing are they actually there to enforce uh, that which had been, I mean, let down, or are they there to fill uh, in uh, their pockets? That might have affected your, uh, maybe, maybe influenced your mark, uh, pass, uh, your mark of fifty sure, percent to sure, for the uh, state, the state yes, for the state. Yes. Uh, uh, comrade uh, Ajinu. Yeah, uh, let, let me even talk about the lockdown. We, we, we have the case of community transmission, yes. which, let me, let me talk which about the is lockdown. very important yes. that the lockdown yes. is uh, being effective right now. Yes. So let, let me talk about the lockdown. There is the, 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 the gap somewhere which. Uh, the federal government did not take into consideration. Okay. Federal government allowed the, the task force to lead the crusade. That shouldn't have been. You mean the presidential task the presidential force? The task force. Yes. Yeah. They, they led the crusade. Who should have led no, the crusade? The, 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 the task force should have worked in hand with the orientation agencies. You know, the, the, the orientation agencies were not really mobilized in such a way that they, they, they ought to have led. Even, even the, the, the engagement. Is well, it, in, is it in sensitization or in, in ensuring the lockdown? In community communication, because you are, you are trying to change your lifestyle. People are used to gathering in a certain bar in a village for 50 years. They've been gathering there. All of a sudden, you invade that bar with a task force and start arresting them. Of course, they're going to meet with resistance. But when you use the orientation process and get people there, the orientation agents, they go in there, wine with them, and talk to them. Uh, uh, teach them, explain to them about the need to close that bar, to lock down that bar, then you achieve results. So it's a case of communication. It's a case of communication. It's not just communication, but what they call community communication, community engagement. That, that, that is what should have led this crusade. And I see it lacking in the federal government approach. You know, you can't, and, and even in the states, where we're having uh, resistance in some areas, and uh, buildings have been demolished, mm -hmm. is because there was no proper personal engagement. You know, the, 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 the strategy should be what the clergy uses in, 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 in converting uh, people into their, into their faith. You know, a, a kind of personal engagement. Okay. People need, uh, when, when the task force went to Okwa, for instance, without this community engagement, they met with, they met with acute resistance and had to return back. 
when the community process had taken place mm. and they were now received they, 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 they met with the, the, the traditional of the place they met with community leaders the youth leaders the women and they were able to achieve the same result what that's what we're saying that for the government how to re-engage the orientation process accurately but this is going to be an ongoing uh, uh, attitudinal change People, mm. you're locking people down, asking them to wear face masks, wash your hands constantly, wear the, don't gather together. People are used to sitting out in the evenings. And people hugging. are used to their, their marriages, their weddings, their parties, and uh, they have lived like that for over all the days of their life. And you're suddenly, you're asking them to change their lifestyle. It, there must be a process. There so must you're be saying uh, the use of force now, if you're not using your face mask, you'll be arrested, you don't have been the first. Yes. First uh, uh, yeah. approach to the first ensuring the exactly. precautionary measures. For you to get effective success in this thing, uh, another process, another community engagement process, grassroots engagement process should have led this crusade. All right. Or, or, or if, even if it's not leading, it should have been working hand in hand before before uh, the, the, the task force agents get to a place. Uh, the, the rotation uh, uh, process should take place first. Okay, you know. let's get the opinion of our listener this morning. You know, uh, we're talking about post-COVID economy. We've not even touched the economy. We've not touched the post-COVID era of the economy. And, of course, we're still talking about the government's handling of COVID-19. It is uh, it is uh, the platform right here on Flow 94.9 FM, the Flow of God's own State, the last edition uh, for the week. Today being Friday, the 15th day in the month of April, uh, month of May 2020. And, of course, uh, the program comes up on radio every Monday, every Wednesday, and also every Friday. If you want to be part of the conversation this morning, as we're talking about government's handling of COVID-19 and, of course, uh, post-COVID economy, uh, the lines are 0808-182-6949 or 0811-6052-949. I take that again, 0808 one eight two six nine four nine or zero eight one one six zero five two nine four nine it is flow ninety four point nine fm hello good morning to you hello good morning good morning what's your name my name is eric uh, welcome. i am calling you thank you um post covid 19 definitely it will be tough because uh, it has been tough all over. So for Nigeria and Arabia particularly, we will not be exempted, except there is an intervention or an invention or a discovery, which is not impossible. Um, but the way the thing has been handled so far, to an extent in Nigeria, leaves much to be desired. I am aware personally that the United States alone, accounting trillion of dollars spent from palliatives to all citizens, all families, whether you are rich, poor, whether you are Dangote or Donald Trump, everybody got. But here that they are doing is selective, it made it impossible for people to really comply. The next other thing is that information did not go as it should. No thanks to poverty, no thanks to illiteracy, no thanks to ignorance and the religious uh, bigotry. But I think that now that we are taking proactive measures, at least I can give kudos to our Arabia state government, for the people that have assembled, to take care of the economy now and then post COVID-19. I have names of, uh, you know, prominent tried tested hands in economic management uh, and uh, accountancy. So I think that that is one of the proactive measures that the state has put in place to uh, ensure right. that after now, Eric. the suffering will not be beyond what is manageable by human. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you for your contribution. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. Welcome to the conversation. Good morning, I get to the house. This is Mr. calling from Mr. Longwanos. Uh, welcome. Thank you, sir. Please, post COVID 19 um, economy, I am suggesting, I'm humbly suggesting our country, our state, the sort of thing is coming to us. They encourage us, just like the man in the house says, you know, when the should be given to our people. Social distancing can be done in the farm. Let's go and help ourselves. When the post COVID 19 economy breakdown will come, and let's lay hands on our agriculture, agriculture department. That is my own. So, okay. 
Uh, thank you very much for your take. We do appreciate for being part of the platform this morning. Good morning to you. 0808-1826-949 or 0811-6052-949. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. Welcome. Good morning, honorable gentlemen in the studio. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I remember Mr. Prince Suluswago calling here from Mumuna Chinobo local government area. My brothers, I'm not happy on the rating you have given to the federal government as regards this COVID-19. That 50% you are giving them to me, I, I, I disagree. If I'm to assess the federal government and the, and the way they are fighting COVID-19, I will give them 25%. What am I saying is, the approach they are using is 100% wrong. They are using the approach of an epidemic instead, instead of um, a pandemic. This is a world affair. They ought to have made people know, the, the people that have this disease, too, they ought to have given account on, on what they have spent. Thirdly, they're supposed to have made the testing, testing centers in every local government. Now, come to the population of Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigeria is almost 200, 220 million people, and they're still on 30,000. They are even, 25% are giving them is quite big. They ought to have come to 15% based on the population of this nation. When compared with South Africa, Ghana, and Egypt, look at the ones that have already tested. Where are we? With 200 million, we are still on 30,000. My brother, it is quite poor. Right. They have to work hard. That's my team. God bless you. Thank you for your take. Good morning to you. Let's take this and we'll go back to the conversation on the platform. Yeah, good morning, morning. Michael. Lonnie. You're welcome. Yeah, good morning to your guest. Uh, good morning. Good You're morning. welcome. Yeah, it's Alvan. I'm calling you from then. Welcome, Alvan. I want to look at uh, the uh, the economy going forward after the post uh, after this uh, pandemic. Of course, it's on record that other states have done so well, you know, in fighting this uh, virus, both in sensitization, because uh, their brightness has really paid off. Of course, uh, the future of uh, our economy remains on agriculture. And that is why the governor of the state have, uh, you know, encouraged the local government to make sure that they really invest in agriculture. Even the wife of the governor is, is championing it. Here in Bend, the local government in particular, the city chairman has set up what he call uh, Bend the Integrated uh, uh, Marketing Board. Of course, this uh, board will ensure that agriculture you know, will be distributed to farmers free. Of course, rural roads will be opened up. And uh, the farmers will be encouraged. So we are encouraging our people to keep in, in these uh, measures the uh, government have adopted, especially uh, right, going back to agriculture. And again, it's necessary that we, the citizens, take responsibility. Not to be sitting down, as not only palliative. When we talk about palliative, we talk about how we will survive okay. after this uh, era. Uh, th 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 thank you very much. Uh, it is still the platform. We take a breather now. When we return, we talk about the palliatives, both at the federal level and also at the state level. Then we do the final anal analysis, which is the post-COVID era, post-COVID economy. Uh, talking about Nigeria, the three tiers of the government, what should be done and what we should expect. It is the last edition of the platform uh, for this week, right here on Flow ninety four point nine FM. <laughs> At Flow 94.9 FM, we've got conducive and well-secured environment for business. High-tech video studio, a state-of-the-art production studio. You can also listen live on www.flow949fm.com and watch our videos on YouTube at Flow FM TV. Flow 94.9 FM, not just radio, but a complete broadcasting house. It is still the platform right here on Flow 94.9 FM, the flow of God's own state. And of course, uh, it is the last edition for the week. Today being Friday, the 15th day in the month of May 2020. My name is Michael. I do have uh, Honorable Godwich Adindu, the former CPS, uh, and of course, the Director General, Abia State Orientation Agency. Uh, he's very much in the studio. And also, uh, Mr. Chidi Asonye. He's a journalist as well as we are discussing post-COVID economy and government's handling of COVID-19 now. Let's talk about the palliatives. And a whole lot 
is being said about the palliatives. Government came out with palliatives for the vulnerable and also for the indigent uh, immediately that lockdown started. Many persons are still complaining we are yet to see the federal government's palliative. Abia state government started palliative distribution of food items and of course uh, uh, cash to through the churches in, in, in batches. They started with the first batch, second batch, took it down to the level of local government and also to uh, the student unions. Now let's rate uh, our government and what should have been done in places where they got it wrong. What will be your advice uh, to this government? Uh, talking about both federal government and uh, state government. Uh, I will begin with you for, uh, Mr. Chide Asonye. Um, the truth is that uh, the palliatives uh, yeah, came. You know, uh, what, uh, whatever uh, position we are taking here, we borrowed from the international community from the West. You know, maybe because uh, just like my friend here said, we weren't ready when he came in and uh, we were like running helter skelter to actually manage what came to us suddenly. Uh, so the palliative actually didn't uh, get down the way it should be and then I, I still at this point wonder who actually are the target, you know, the vulnerable and uh, and all that and all that. Uh, mentioned. In some developed countries, uh, palliatives were given in a way, uh, 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 in a way of giving money. Yes, it's a way of giving yes. money. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. In some and and it, it went around yes. not for selected persons, yes. as pointed out by uh, one of the callers on the program this morning. It went around. Uh, you receive an alert, but you come to discover that in Nigeria we do not have uh, a, a a system. We do not have a system where a, when you dish out something like that, it trickles down and it affects all households in the country. That, that's the problem. You think uh, we cannot do it? Uh, if they actually wanted to think... Uh, uh, there, there is no database. That's the word I'm looking well, for. Well, data no database. database. But there are uh, other ways of actually of, uh, trying to reach out to the people. That's the truth. For instance, l let, me, let me go to uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the NEPA, for instance. You know, they have the bill of every house. If you go through them, you can reach every house. What about those with two houses? Uh, some persons have built uh, more than three houses. Well, other, Wh other while, while some persons do not even have a house. Yes, and others talk, talk about also using uh, the Bivian cards. I mean, we had the, the Bivian numbers to reach out to people. But the truth is that no attempt was actually made to reach out to everybody in Nigeria. That's my, that's my thinking. Because it didn't get to everybody. Still, at, uh, even at the state level, people, a lot of people are still complaining. It was said that a 5,000 naira was given out to uh, some persons through the federal government. I, I don't know if you heard about that. And also, there is a loan being given out by the CBN which you can access uh, through the Nisral microfinance bank you can get get as much i as saw that online but three, i've not three, three, three million naira yes i saw that you online but i've not i've that. not seen any one, uh, one beneficiary you are, are talking still talking about the five thousand naira uh, i learned also up there in the north a lot of things happened they decided look the down this way we're better off than them up there and therefore we wouldn't get anything here as if we don't belong to the, to, to the same uh, country so that is issue. Uh, uh, that, that's your assessment of the federal government. What about the state government? Yes, at the state government. Yes, uh, just like you pointed out, the churches were used, but then uh, I'm sure we didn't capture all the churches. We used the major churches. Maybe it's not easy to actually take data. Then you go back to that again to get a data of a, uh, a database of a, what the churches we have here, or the organization we have here, because most churches didn't get. And some of them that got it were like, this is this is actually it, it didn't go anywhere. I know of a church in Abba that got it and they were like, by the time it goes down, they won't even get a cup of rice each. It but may not, it may not be easy. The, gov may not the, be gov easy the government came out and said it's a way of helping. You sure. can't feed everyone. Sure, sure, I, sure. I, I'm not speaking for the government, of but course, of course. I, I'm only trying to balance things here. The government came out and said that, uh, well, we can't uh, accommodate everyone. Sure. But and called on the well-to-do in the society to also come up with they also They also came in to help. The private people came in to help. Pop, uh, corporate bodies came in to help. But what we are saying is, what is what doing is what doing well. If you want to say you are giving out something and you are able to pronounce it, you are blow a trumpet about it, please, you have to make it go as far as you can. It doesn't mean it will get to everybody. We know it's not possible. But then those people who are, I mean, the, who are really actually, who are the targets actually? Did they get to all of them that are the targets? Or do we go midway and then it stopped? You won't blame anybody, anybody because probably we, they were not prepared. It just came and they were trying to, you know, uh, do a fire brigade approach, approach. They want to do see as much as they can. But the truth is that palliatives didn't get actually to 
those who they're supposed to get to and those he got to then, it was almost whose nothing. fault those ones giving us to the, to planning, the churches planning, whose fault? Is, it, is it the churches now that we should blame or the, the government that gave it out if you give a catholic church six million naira and some bags of rice and, and bags of beans and yam and and uh, and, uh, in, and noodles they're talking about umaya diocese for instance of the catholic church and then by how many how many how many how many how many parish are, parishes are in a diocese it has to trickle down there and go to all these villages there are churches also there are members that's what we're saying mm. i know it's not easy to get to all of them that is why i also suggested that there's no point blowing the trumpet go down as much as you can use the money used in blowing trumpet and get more materials and then more palettes uh, for the people like i said it is just a help you are not coming to uh, to bring a food basket on the table of every every citizen in the country that is the truth but then like i said what is what doing is what doing well if it's a palliative let it be palliative that the people will look on i mean fall, fall back on and said yes at least the government was able to do this at this point i'm not trying to say they're not doing anything a lot of people are receiving at a local over i see some people having uh, going to uh, to a bag of a uh, uh, selfing bag of rice with how many cups well okay. that is it all right honorable adindu what's your assessment of the palette has been given uh, by both the federal government and also the state government yeah in the in the area of the federal government my mm -hmm comment this morning is just is going to be uh, a, a suggestion for for things to be done properly mm. in all the instances both the the the, 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 the story of, of people getting a lot the stories of uh, things being moved to states and everything uh, I, I, I made calls here and there and I didn't come across anybody who received anything the 5,000, I, I never come across anybody who received it. I Even even the calls I made outside of our states, nobody has ever told me he received anything. So my but, comment but, but, this morning... But we have a register, a social register by the federal government uh, uh, that, uh, that includes the poorest of the poor in the society. Those are those uh, those are the people targeted according to the statement by the federal government. Yeah, but what I'm saying here now, because I can't stand here and be defending what I'm not sure of. But, okay. What I'm saying here now is that even among the poorest of the poor, I have not met or discovered anybody that have told me that he or she received something from the federal so government. So that is why I'm saying I'm telling the federal government, I'm using this platform to, to give a feedback system to the federal government to go mm -hmm. back to the drawing board and work on that palliative process again it has not been well done it has not been well executed and the, and the feedback is very very negative mm. you know even in in highly poor areas in 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 highly populated areas where you have uh, the, the, the poorest of the poor i i, I don't think anything first there was even a, a funny report where food was shared somewhere and people you know scamper for this food yeah. and destroy this there were uh, uh, stories where people were shared bread bread you know people went they to you know they kicked it and people kicked it, it and threw it away so so it has not been properly done let's get back to the federal government let's give them a feedback a statement here today the federal government had to go back to the drawing board okay and work on that process again okay